Guys, I was wrong. The RG35XXH is good. In fact, it's great. It's so good. It is my number one recommended pick. If you're somebody in the market for your first retro handheld, get the H. Now, I know that's a crazy, bold statement to make. With every other option on the market right now, why do I say that? Let's talk about it. Play retro. Hey guys, you're watching Play Retro. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Javi. And today, we're going to be reviewing the RG35XXH. Now, this is a device that Ambernic released one month after they released the Plus model. And this shares basically the exact same internals as the Plus, uh, as many of you already know, except there's a couple uh, key differences. First of all, it's horizontal, obviously. That's the biggest difference, uh, the form factor. It also has joysticks. It also has stereo sound. Over on the back, we have these nice rubber pads, but no accessible battery compartment. And then you have an additional OTG port up on top. So really quick, I wanna thank uh, Lit NXT for making this video possible. They did send this unit out for a fair and unbiased review. So full disclosure, I did receive this unit for free, but no money was exchanged. And anything I say within this video is my own opinion. They also have not seen this video beforehand. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the review. Starting with the unboxing. Okay, so getting right into the unboxing. Uh, let's have a quick look at the box. I love what Ambernick's been doing with their boxes. That is nice little gold trim to it. It says RG35XXH. We're looking at the sides, nothing on these sides. We do have the 128 and the black model. And yeah, everything else is kind of blank, so. But I love how slim this box is. It reminds me of a phone, you know, like a phone box. So getting this right open. And we have our console, standard stuff in this little bag. Set this aside for one second. Under this, we do have our cleaning wipes, a screen protector, just glass. We'll see how this fits in a, in a moment. We also have our nice little user's manual. And we have this little box with our charging cable inside. And it appears to be a good length. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so that's not too bad. It looks like a three foot cable. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a generous length, somewhat longer than some cables I've seen from other companies. So, okay, so let's set this aside for a second. Have a look at the console. And wow, look at that. So this is what the black model looks like. It's very, very sleek. Just all blacked out except for those rainbow buttons. You see here, I'll give you a good look at it. All black. Even the rubber pads on the back kind of match, which is nice as well. Ambernick really did their thing with this. Okay, so now let's get into our initial device tour. So starting from left to right, right over here, we do have our select button, our nice D-pad, and our left joystick. Over in the center, we have our beautiful display. The right-hand side, we do have our start button. Then we have A, B, X, Y in a Nintendo configuration, and we have our right joystick. Now moving over to the left side, we do have our volume rocker. Over on the right hand side, we do have our power button and reset button. Over on the top side, we do have L1, L2, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, OTG1, HDMI out. This is a mini HDMI port. This is our charging port, DC, OTG2. And then we have the function key, which is basically our menu key, and then R2 and R1. Now over on the bottom, we do have stereo sound on this device. That is our left speaker, TF1. TF2. So if you just order the 64 gig, you'll have your OS and your games in TF1. But if you get both like this model, you'll have games in both. So this is usually for your OS and this is usually for your games. And then we have our right speaker hole. Now over on the back. So this is pretty bare bones. We have a couple screws here. We have this label that just tells us what to use for charging. This is pretty important. Um, and then we do have these nice rubber pads which do help for non-slip. Okay, and that's the initial device tour. Okay, so now we're gonna do a few size comparisons just so you guys can get a better idea of the size of this thing. So starting with some of the obvious ones. First, 
we have our Miu Mini. So side by side, you can see the Miu Mini is a little bit wider and way shorter. Put them like this, okay? And now for the RT35XX Plus. And now let's do some horizontal devices. Got our RGB30. So they're about the same width, but as you can see, the RGB30 is just longer, it's wider. Now we have a Trim UI Smart Pro. Put that on top for some perspective. And now just for fun, got the RG Nano. It's so tiny. And there's my Odin 2 next to the H. As you can see, it fits right inside the screen. It's a big boy. So how much do these go for? So you can get one of these directly from Ambernick and these retail for $67.99 plus shipping. So for me, I live in New Jersey. Ambernick charges me $12 shipping. So in total, I'd be paying $80 from Ambernick to get this directly from Ambernick. However, our friends over at Lit NXT also sell this device and they're selling it for $89.99 with free shipping. And you can use code lit nxt for 10 percent off at checkout so you save yourself a little bit of money they also sell a bundle with a frequently bought together so you can get the device and you can get the case together and if you're lucky and the sale is still going you can get them get the case free so that again that code is lit nxt for 10 percent off at checkout okay so really quick i want to briefly touch on the specs so first of all we have three color options we have a the black you see in front of us we also have a transparent white which is right over here and we also have a transparent purple. The screen is a 3.5 inch IPS OCA laminated display with a resolution of 640 by 480. So it's a four by three aspect ratio screen. For our CPU, this thing's rocking an H700 quad core uh, ARM Cortex A53 clocked at 1.5 gigahertz, uh, coupled with a dual core G31 MP2. Uh, alongside that, we also have one gigabyte of LPDDR4 RAM. We also have two storage slots. Our OS is Linux based and we also have custom firmware. We have Botticera Lite, we have Botticera 40. And we also have MUOS available for this device at the moment. Connectivity wise, we have, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and HDMI out. Uh, for our battery, we have a 3300 milliamp hour battery rated for eight hours. And to charge that battery, we do have USB-C. And then some other notable features. This thing does have a rumble motor. So we do have vibration and we do have stereo sound. And now let's get more in depth on these controls, starting with the D-pad. So let's get a little close up of this D-pad. Um, I think this D-pad is really good. My only complaint with it is that the edges are a bit sharp compared to the Plus. The Plus's D-pad is much more rounded than this one, but this is still an excellent D-pad. The membranes Amber Ambernick used with this D-pad are very good. The only time I think you would notice this is if you play a lot of fighting games and do a lot of roll movements, like something like this, this may bother you. But other than that, it's a very, very good D-pad. I think the start and select positioning are, are very good. They do feel good to press. And there's no like label that can scratch off. This is embedded into the device, which is really nice. Moving over to the action buttons, you can see here, these are glossy and they feel really nice to the touch. They're also membrane having the same membrane the D-pad has. So they're very nice and soft to press. They're also a Nintendo layout, which is the best layout because most people want to play on Nintendo games. So Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, NES, SNES, that sort of thing. Those are all going to be in this configuration. As well as that, we have our joysticks and they're not the most ergonomic joysticks, like just playing. These are obviously going to be more comfortable than these, you know, just how your fingers naturally rest on a device. But it is better to have the D-pad up top for a device like this, for what this can play. So I like the position where the joysticks are and the joysticks do add a lot of functionality, something you do not get on the plus. So this is going to be beneficial, especially because this thing can play. Uh, some of the higher end systems like Dreamcast, N64, uh, Nintendo DS, and that sort of thing, PSP, those are all gonna benefit from these joysticks. So th th it's nice to have the joysticks. And then you can also just use them for other stuff. Like if you don't wanna use a D-pad for like something like Pokemon, you can use the joysticks. And these are good joysticks. They feel very good. They don't have the most range of motion, um, 
because they are like Nintendo Switch style, but they are nice and they're recessed as well. So if you did want to pocket this, you could. I personally wouldn't. Um, just because there is a chance you could develop stick drift from this just sliding in your pocket. But um, they are there. And as you can see, they don't go up above too much above the, the action buttons in the D-pad, as you can see right here. So I really do like what, what Ambernix done. It's very, very simple face of the device. Now, let's move over to these shoulder buttons. So as you can see, the R2 is higher up than the R1, which is really nice, but they are fairly small. And they're, they make a fun sound. Almost like a clicky sound. Now, um, the good thing is they're not too loud. But they are so close to your fingers that I feel they're a bit uncomfortable to use. If you're playing a racing game or something, I, I think this would be a little bit uncomfortable to use. Now let's talk about this function button. And this is one beef I do have with this device, just the position of this menu button. I do wish this menu button was in a better spot. So I have a manual here. Now I know there's gonna be people who always make fun of me in the comments because I actually read the manual. I do find these handy, all right? I don't care, I like manuals, all right guys? Um, if we reference the game manual here, you can see F plus R2. Um, Look at the, how awkward this is. So you have to use F plus R2. Think about how you use this like this. This is fast forward. Like you see how awkward this is? Incredibly awkward for fast forward. So, <clears throat> I mean, everything else is not that bad. Like this plus this, that's pause. This plus this, that's FPS. It's not the worst thing in the world. Make it pause and I don't know. <clears throat> you can screenshot as well but just using these buttons with this in combination with this is just awful it looks really awful so my my advice for anybody picking up the h just do not use these for hockeys do not use r2 and r1 just map fast forward or whatever's already mapped to these buttons to something else like i would probably i, I like um maybe menu plus y for fast forward I, I just don't like that. So yeah, this is a safe state and fast forward. Those two hockeys, I would move to something else just because of the placement of where the menu is makes those um, hockeys really awkward. So yeah, that's my only beef. I just wish Amrinik would have put it like somewhere here or here, um, despite maybe it being a little bit, um, but I just feel like it would have been so much easier to use. I did also want to talk about the volume rocker and uh, the power power and reset button. So this is what I mean by what I was wrong So initially I thought that because these buttons were here on the sides where your hands would naturally rest that you would maybe accidentally press these and It was just kind of like dumb design to me, but after getting the handheld in person I actually don't mind these at all. So they're very recessed as you can see you can't even see it from the side and on top of that when you're actually playing it your hands never actually touch this area like just from the, your natural grip they don't actually touch this area at all. So if anything, it touches like down here when you're holding the device. So that's pretty interesting. Um, and something I was actually genuinely wrong about this device. And of course, Ambernic, I'm super happy. They always include a reset button in these devices. Not there's something that not all companies do. And then our volume rocker on this side. So yeah, I am happy with the placement of these buttons. So yeah, that's the controls. I really, really like the controls. Um, and this is better than a lot of devices at this price point. Um, every single button on this device feels good. Every single one. Now I did want to talk about one perk of the black model is the fact that the, there's no light bleed with the LED light indicator. So if that's something that bothers you, definitely consider the black model. For anybody not familiar with Ambernic products, 
um, I want to show you guys what the stock operating system looks like, like the software when you turn this thing on. So you have two game rooms primarily. You have game rooms. This is where all your standalone emulators would be. And then you have RA game for RetroArch. So this is all RetroArch based emulators. And I, I do want to show you this does come preloaded with uh, many, many games. So we have it makes you decide between which uh, storage card you want to what you want to choose. In this case, I do have two. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. You have a bunch of games. Like, let me just show you some some PSP games. So you have Balloons TD, Bomberman, Castlevania X, uh, God of War Change of Olympus, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, Mega Man Mavericks Hunter, you know, Pac-Man Lightning Edition, Ridge Racer, Tekken 6 and Tekken 5. And that's for PSP. And then you have a bunch of PS1 games in here. I'll let you look through that so I don't have to read everything, every single thing. A lot of great stuff. And then now let me switch over into TF2 so you can see what else is in here. So you have Age of Zombies, Burnout, Crisis Core, you know. Uh, they do have another copy of Change of Olympus for whatever reason. There's going to be a few um, doubles here and there for anybody interested in, in PSP emulation. Again, PSP is somewhat of a bonus system on this thing, but whatever games are on this device will most likely run well. And then RA games, same thing. It just has like a somewhat of a different interface. In RA game, you'll also find Dreamcast. So this is another higher end system you can emulate on this thing. You have Crazy Taxi in here that are alive. Now, as far as performance is concerned, anything you see in this menu, um, this device can play. So PSP, Open Board, Dreamcast, PlayStation, all of the Capcom arcade machines, Neo Geo, some more arcade stuff over here, some vertical arcade, which is really nice. Uh, Pico 8, Poke Mini, Atari, Virtual Boy, Game to Watch, uh, Game Boy Advance, NES, SNES, all of the Sega systems, uh, Genesis, Sega CD, Master System, Game Gear, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, PC Engine, PC Engine CD, a Neo Geo Pocket Color, Wonder Swan, I don't know what this is, and Nintendo DS. And then you also have some ports in here as well. So just additional native running games. So performance wise, you can expect the perfect emulation up to PS1. And then you have PSP, Dreamcast, N64, and DS that will be like bonus systems. So you'll have a good amount of those, of those libraries, but a good amount of them will play well. So yeah, those are your main two rooms. And then you can also favorite stuff. So like, let's say, let's say I, I really like this Alien Trilogy. I could just press start, puts a little star right here. And now when I go to the star on the main menu, that game will be right here. So that's a nice little function. You also have a history. So this says anything you've played will be in here. It's auto populates and you can delete it. If it's bothering you. You also have a search function, which is really handy. So for example, let's say I love Mega Man games and boom, it showed me every single Mega Man I have on both of my SD cards. And then finally we have a settings menu. So in here you can uh, change your brightness. You can change how, how long it takes to, to turn off the screen and lock it. You have an input tester, which is really handy. So you can check if everything is, is good. Start and select, you know, that's, that sort of thing. Really nice thing, date and time. You can change language. So if you're not an English speaker, you also have Spanish in here and some Asian languages. Uh, you can also access RetroArch. In here, you could also um, turn on your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth. You can also do some moonlight streaming. You can change your icons, etc., etc., etc. And yeah, that's the stock operating system. It's not the best looking operating system, but I'll have to say it does work really well. Okay, so now I wanna show you a couple case options you do have for this device. First off, I'll show you this like generic case. You can usually purchase with the device. So this is kind of like a woven fabric that kind of turns hard. I think they've glued it together. So it does have some kind of like rigidity to it. And you've seen these everywhere. They're kind of like generic. They're used for like multiple devices. And now I want you to see how this fits. So here's the, the console in here, of course. And you do have some space around the sides and that's not the best thing because it does, it does shake in there. 
but the good thing is like if you do like to have like a wrist strap or something you have space to put that there and you also have space for other stuff maybe you like to put some headphones in here maybe a, a cleaning cloth or uh, maybe an sd card reader or whatever whatever you like to to keep with your handheld you have a little bit of space in here to put the the, the your accessories and you know it's it's a good size it's not too crazy but it is a little bit more bulky so this would be perfect to just throw in your bag or something like that and it does have this little this wrist strap on the side so you can just you know hold it like this or whatever so this option i think is okay now these things um i often will cut the this thing in the middle just because i i don't like to have to always do this and sometimes the joystick gets caught with this um this like strap here so this is an okay option sorry don't mind the cat hair these cats get everywhere so now i want to show you a better option okay so this case was actually a case my good friend too loud tech uh printed for me this is a 3d printed case and this case is awesome and i'm going to tell you why first of all if you're not subscribed to too loud tech go subscribe to him right now i'm going to leave a link in the description go subscribe to him my good friend Okay, and he printed this case for me. Check out how this fits. So here's 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 the H. And look how perfect this is. So there's you can see there's grooves and cutouts for every single component. You know, you have the buttons, the start button, D-pad, all that. You even put a piece of felt right here. So even the screen is not touched. And this does add a little bit of, of cushioning and keeps the device from moving at all. He even has little grooves for the rubber pads on the back of the device, which is just awesome. And look at this, boom, secure. And this closes up to about the size of a DS. That's what I would say. This is super pocket friendly. Like it's, it's really not that big. Like if you see my hands, this slides in your pocket, no problem. And there's no wasted space. Look at this. That H is not going anywhere. And something you can do with this case, that you can't do with the other case, this case right here, the fact that it has a little slot for you to charge it. Okay, so I got my charger here, okay? And now I'm gonna demo what this is actually like. You can have this closed up, right? And then in here, just plug this in, just like that. And boom, now you can charge your, your handheld. So obviously I don't have this plugged into the wall, but if, if it was, it would be charging. And as you can see, you can just open it, peek in there, look at the light, see if it's done charging. And yeah, it fits like a glove. So let me give you a close up of this. So as you can see, it says DC, this is the charging port. So the best part about this is that because it's 3D printed, you guys can have whatever you want. So like this color right here, this is called Blurple, right? It's kind of like a shiny, um, blue slash purple color. It does look a little bit different on camera than it does look like in, in person, but he has a bunch of cool colors. He has like uh, gold, he has red, white, uh, black, blue, green, whatever floats your boat, he, he probably has filament for. And the best part about this too, is that you can customize it. So like, let's say um, you want your name on this, or you want it to say RG35XXH on it. So you could have it labeled like this is this console and, and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, <clears throat> my good friend Too Loud Tech does have these for sale um, in our 3D print shop in, in our Discord. I'll leave a link to our Discord. You'll see a, a channel called 3D Print Shop and he has this there for sale. This is going for 20 bucks plus like five bucks shipping. So it's really not too bad, especially because you're getting it custom made and it fits like a glove, like no wasted space. The only drawback to this case is the fact that there's no additional space for anything else. Now that's a, both a pro and a con, right? Because because there's no additional space, this will slide into your pocket, so it's way more pocket friendly than something like this. Like compare these side by side, you can see how slim this one is compared to this one. But there's added benefits to this. Like you just you could just throw your H in here. You won't have to worry about the joysticks um, getting destroyed. You know, developing stick drift you know, the screen getting scratched or anything like that. And yeah, that's this case. So yeah, I just wanted to show, show that off real quick. 
some of the case options you do have. And now let's get into the pros and cons of this device. So first, let's start with the pros. So first of all, I love the form factor. Uh, I love that it's horizontal. I think this is the definitive version of all the RG35XXs that are out. Second, I absolutely love the controls. I think the controls are great. I think there's nothing to complain about here. You know, D-pad is in the correct location. The action buttons are nice and soft and they're not loud. All the buttons are positioned in, in a good place for the most part. Yeah, there's not too much to complain about here. Aside from that, it has a fairly good battery life of eight hours. Um, that is pretty respectable for a device for this price point. I also really like the size. It is about the size of a smartphone. So if I put my smartphone right here, uh, the H is like a little bit smaller than, than a smartphone. I think a lot of people are not gonna have a problem on putting this in their pocket. Aside from that, it has a very good performance. This thing can emulate up to PS1 basically perfectly. And then on top of that, you have stuff like this, like DS, that you can play uh, PSP, N64, and Dreamcast. You know, you have a good amount of that, those catalogs as well that you can mess with. I also like that it has stereo sound. That's something that you don't find in the other RGs, which is really nice. So stereo sound's always good. And it also has all the connectivity you could possibly want. It has Wi-Fi, it has Bluetooth, and it has HDMI out. So anything you're gonna wanna do with the connectivity features, you're gonna be able to do with the RG35XXH. And finally, I just really like, um, I just think it's a really good price, right? I think this device has a very good bang for your buck as far as like what you're getting for the money. And now let's talk about the cons. So I, I am gonna be a little bit nitpicky here because of course I have to point out something I don't like or else this will be a little bit biased. But for example, I don't like the position of, of the function button. I think it's a little bit awkward. Also, my, my hands do cramp up over time after using the joysticks. So the joysticks aren't that comfortable, especially for long extended play sessions. You will find your pinkies, your hands cramping up over time. Also, I think the joysticks do get in the way of it being really, really pocket friendly. So like if you throw this in your pocket, the joystick can get snagged while putting it into your pocket. So that is somewhat of a con of this device. But I mean, what you gain for it, I think heavily outweighs uh, the, the downsides. And then the last thing, I think Ambernix software could be better. I do appreciate the work they've done to make, to make improvements to their stock operating system, but I still think it looks a little bit janky and kind of dated. For example, like just these icons on the on the face um, and like just the way they, they have, they govern their box art. This looks a little bit weird. You know, stuff like this inconsistency in their uh, in their games list. I don't know. I, I just want a little bit more polish from Ambernick. So you can see here they've they take the box art and then they squish it into this like four by three aspect ratio. It looks a little bit, I don't know, off um, stuff like that. You know, it does look a little bit janky, but again, at least everything works. It's not the prettiest thing, 
but at least it works. So I will say that is somewhat of a con of, of this device, the stock operating system. So in conclusion guys, I think the RG35XXH is one of Ambernic's best products to date. It's got a great build, it's got great controls, it's got a great screen, it's got great performance. And it's even got a really great price on top of that. I think out of everything on the market right now, the H is probably the best starter retro handheld for anybody um, looking to get into this hobby. The H really has it all. And I think it's the best handheld under $100. But yeah, guys, let me know what you thought of the, of the review in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, and if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. My name is Javi, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.